Hey guys, this is Jesse with JTS Woodworking, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to build your own crosscut sled. So let's get to it. Hey, what's going on, guys? So, this is my crosscut sled build. So, the first thing I'm doing is uh, cutting up this piece of three quarter inch plywood into three strips into uh, in order to make the fence. So I'm cutting three strips here and I will glue them together. Now I'm going to use the fence on my table saw as a support um, to clamp it to and in order to make sure that this thing clamps straight and even, uh, it actually worked really well. So we'll go ahead and put glue on either side and put the boards together. And then we will start putting clamps on and you can never have too many clamps, right guys? So I just filled it up with as many clamps as I could and waited till it dried overnight. Now we can remove the clamps the next day and we'll see what we got. All right, so I'm gonna have to trim this up a little bit, but we'll go ahead and just trim it up a little bit on the table saw and get one flat side there. And now I'm cutting the runners. Now I'm using uh, strips of maple that I had. Um, it's a hard wood and there's a lot less flex and um, it's just very sturdy. So I recommend using a hardwood here. So I'm just cutting it gradually down until it just snugly or just barely slides in my groove there on my table saw. All right, seems to fit pretty well. I am gonna be sanding it a little bit so it doesn't have to be perfect. So now I'm cutting it to depth. So I'm cutting it just shallower than the depth of this groove here. Making sure again it fits. Just a little bit of side to side play, but that's fine, we want a little bit. And now I'm cutting the other side. So we're gonna have two runners. Now I'm cutting the actual size of the the crosscut slit here and I'm putting washers or I believe these were nuts in order to raise this runner up high enough above the ta uh, table saw and now we're gonna put glue on these runners um, regular wood glue and also some CA glue to get it to bond quicker the CA glue will get it to bond quicker and then the wood glue will make for a more permanent bond and I'm also gonna be adding screws too from underneath so Anyways, putting that CA glue on, now getting the top on, getting it lined up on my fence where I want it. Making sure that the runners protrude out of each end, so I'll, I'll trim those off later. Now just putting some downward pressure on here for, I don't know, I think it was 15 to 30 seconds. And then I was able to flip it over. And there you go. So like I said, I'm going to put screws in here too. So uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is countersink, or rather drill some pilot holes and then countersink those holes. The pilot holes will make sure that the wood doesn't split when you drive the screws in. And the countersink part will make sure the head of the, the screw is flush or below that surface because you don't want that scraping up uh, against your table saw. All right, now that I got them all countersunk, I'm just gonna drive in these screws. All right, get that dust off there. Looks good, now I'm gonna just start sanding it a little bit so you make sure it's a nice fit. And I did use paste wax on these runners so it slides and glides on the table saw uh, very smoothly. Just giving it a test fit here. And this should fit in smoothly with very little if if any side to side play so I'm checking that it's smooth there and checking for side to side play and it doesn't have any so perfect now I'm cutting uh, the groove on the top of my fence because I'm going to put a t-track in here so that I can use a stop block setup so I'm just cutting in uh, it's shallow increments with a three-quarter inch bit dado bit I guess you'd call it and just Keep going until this track fits in flush or below the surface slightly. Pound that in and then I can fix it later with some screws, but yeah. All 
All right, now I'm raising the blade. I just want to raise the blade, cut th right through this crosscut sled a little bit, not all the way to the end, because um, we want to put our fence on first. So I am basically just putting in two screws from underneath, one on the left and one on the right. You can't see it because I'm going to end up trying to adjust this thing using what's called the five cut method. So you want to put in your two screws, countersink them, um, pilot holes, use pilot holes obviously, and get it set up as close as you can to 90 degrees to your tail saw. Okay, so here I am, I got those clamped down, or the fence clamped down rather, and now I'm putting in the screws. There's my new impact, which I love. All right, now I can remove the clamps and start working on this five cut method. First, I'm gonna saw right through the fence. All right, I put a back fence on there too, just temporarily, uh, which I did keep on there. But, so the five cut method, I'm not gonna go into detail, but basically you take a square piece of board like this, you start cutting each end, one end, then rotate it 90 degrees, cut the other end 90 degrees, until you do that at each end. And then the fifth cut, you will cut a board like this, which is like one to two inches uh, wide, and you wanna measure the top, which is A, I'm gonna call it, minus the bottom, which is B, okay? And you wanna be measuring this in, um, uh, well, I, you wanna be measuring it in small increments, like decimals, to the thousands of a place. So, so I use a pair of digital calipers here, and I measured A, and I measured B, and I took A minus B, and then I went through the whole formula, um, which is not that complicated, but I will leave a link to a video on that in the description below. Well, that calculation tells me how much I need to adjust this side of the fence. So I put a stop lock there, and for this one, I needed to adjust it up just ever so slightly, just a few thousandths of an inch. Um, so I did that using a pair of feeler gauges. Now we do the five cut method all over again. Cut off each side, and then that fifth cut will cut a, a wider piece. Here we go. And then now do the same thing. And ideally, if you're exactly 90 degrees, A minus B should, in theory, equal zero. 0.000. Uh, most people can get it within a thousandths or two thousandths of an inch, which is perfectly fine. But we're going to see how close uh, I can get it here. All right guys, so that's it. The five cut method to get your cross cut sled accurate, I will leave a link in the description below to a video for that. I didn't wanna to get too specific on that, but it does work, okay? It only took me a couple tries and I'm really happy with how it turned out. So anyways, if you guys like this video, please leave it a like, please comment, and please subscribe. And we'll see you in that next video. Thanks.